In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Flutter package, Flutter Staggered Grid View. This package enables us to have different grid layouts, as you can see here, for example. So this is also the sample app we're going to build today, where on our homepage, we have this list of different grid views we can use with this package. So as you have seen before, this is the staggered grid view. Then we can also do this masonry grid view, the quilted grid view here, the woven one, then the stared one and finally the aligned one. I'm going to show you how to use all these different grid layouts within this tutorial. Let's get started. First, this is the package we're going to use as mentioned. Copy this to your clipboard, then go to your pubspec.yaml file and underneath your dependencies, just import it in here and run pubget. That's all we need to do for the setup. Then for our app, I basically created a very simple app. I defined a list of strings with the different layout names, which we're going to show here in our list view. And as you can see here, it's just a list view.builder with the item count of layouts.length. So the length of this list. Then for each item, it's simply an expanded text, a size box in between here, and then the arrow icon. Then I wrapped this row with a gesture detector. So when we click on this, it will open up a new screen and in this case I call it the staggered screen. Before I show you this, I'm also going to mention that I've defined an enum in the file global enums and this enum is called grid type and each value of this enum is then representing one of the different grid types I'm going to show you. That's why you also see here when you click on one of the items on the home screen, we open up the staggered screen and here we give in the grid type from our enum that values based on the index. So the index, if the index is zero, then it will have this grid type dot staggered. And then we also give through the layout name from our layouts list so that when we open up a grid view, we can show this title up here. So let's have a look at the staggered screen. So as mentioned, the constructor here requires two variables. First, our custom enum variable and then the title. And this title we simply show in our app bar. We have a leading action within our app bar, which is simply the back button here. So when we click on it, navigator.pop context is called. So we close this screen and then the body of our scaffold here we call the get grid function here now i have to mention that this is not ideal you shouldn't outsource your widget code to different functions you should do this with different widgets so either stateful or stateless widgets but in this case i wanted to use switch and it's easier to do it with a function like here so based on the selected grid we've passed through. So again, this is our custom enum. So if, for example, the grid type is staggered, then we're going to return the get staggered grid to our body here. And then each function here has defined its own grid and then returns this here. And again, it returns it then to the body of our scaffold, which will be shown in our app. So let's have a look first at our get staggered grid. So as you can see here, we have the first item here, then the second item here, then here, then here, and then here. So this staggered grid is ideal if if you have a small number of items in here, then the staggered grid is evenly divided in n columns. So in this case, we define the columns four. So there's one, two, three, four columns in here. One thing to mention is also that this staggered grid is not scrollable. So again, this is only ideal for a small number of items. And the placement, as you can see here, is topmost and then top left. So first here, then topmost here. Then in case of here, is it topmost? Yes, since here it's, it's the highest point, since we can't put it here yet. And then where should we put the third in this case? So number two, should we put it to the right or to the left? And again, since it's topmost and then leftmost, that's where we place the next item here. And then is it topmost? In this case, this is only remaining, so we place it the next item here and so on. I defined spacing in between the main axis and the cross axis. The main axis padding is basically here and the cross axis is this here. So if we change, for example, the main axis spacing to zero, reload our app, then again, our spacing is gone here. Let's reverse this and show you the cross axis spacing. As you can see here now, then there's no spacing in between here. So now how can we achieve this? That for example, we have such an item and then smaller items like this. This is very simple. So our staggered grid has a number of children, in this case called staggered grid tile. And as I mentioned before, we have defined four columns in our staggered grid. And in this case, this tile takes up 
two columns that's why it's so big and that's why for example this one here only takes up one since we in this case have to find that the column number should only be one and again in this case here why is it not taking up only one row but two rows as you can see here because here's a row and here's a row well we have to find main access cell count to two that's why there are two rows that's why this tile is occupying two rows so in this case here for the one so tile index one we are occupying two columns one here one here but only one row as you can see here then for two we're occupying only one column and one row that's why it's one one here the same for index three only one column and only one row and then for four we're occupying all the columns in here four as you can see here four and we're occupying two rows so as you can see here one and two so if we change this to four as you can see here this gets a lot bigger that's it for the staggered grid view now let's have a look at the masonry grid view here again the grid is evenly divided into n columns and one tile must only occupy one column and the placement again here is topmost and then leftmost so zero one two three then since this is the topmost here then for the next item that's why four is placed here then the next topmost leftmost is five here then the next here is the topmost leftmost is six then what do you think is the next topmost leftmost so if you were going with this pattern you would expect here to be seven but this is not the topmost since here this is the topmost that's why seven is here and then the topmost is in this case here so that's why eight is here then again what's the topmost here after eight since this is the topmost here again we place nine here and again also here i defined the padding for the main axis here of 10 and the cross axis also of 10 here that's it for the masonry grid view let's have a look at the quilted grid view here the height of each row is equal to the width of each column so here this is the width of the column and this is the height of the row so they have to be equal in this case and one tile must occupy one to n columns so at least one column or all the columns and must occupy at least one row or more entire rows so as you can see here the first number here is representing the number of rows so we are occupying here two rows and then here two columns then for one and two both occupy only one row in one column and for the last one here we're occupying one row out of the two here but two columns and then in here we can specify the repeat pattern in this case inverted so whenever we have to find our pattern here this is our pattern then for the next pattern it's just gonna repeat this but inverted so it's the other way around where the bigger item is now in this case to the right instead of the left once this pattern is finished then again it's gonna invert it back to the original pattern as you can see here that's it for the quilted grid layout now let's have a look at the woven grid layout here the items are displayed in containers of varying ratios to create a rhythmic layout so in this case you can see one tile is bigger the other one and then it's gonna reverse it and then reverse it again and so on here in this case we've defined two columns as you can see here one and two again we have some spacing in between here and the one in this case defines the aspect ratio of the roving grid tile and you can also define the cross axis ratio next let's have a look at the next grid layout which is the stared one and this basically has a z effect a z sequence as you can see here so it's going like this and you can be very creative with this you can try out different values if you want to and finally let's have a look at the aligned grid view where we simply have one row where each child must be at the same height of the biggest child within this row so for example if the zeroth item was this high but the first item was this high then the zeroth item even though it was only this high here has to be as this big as the first one here we define again we have four columns we have again spacing of 10 in between the main axis and the cross axis so this extent is just something to make this look a bit more fancy to show you how this will look like but of course this should be according to your own widget since this tile is simply a container with a background color and where you customly define the height of the container and then within this container you center simply this number here so this extent basically means that the numbers 0 to 3 should have the height of this height here and then the numbers 4 to 7 have a bigger height then it's again smaller then again bigger and so on i hope you like this tutorial please leave a like and subscribe if you have any questions feel free to ask them down below in the comments and thank you for watching